Hello everybody and welcome back to the VR Rundown. As always, I am Mateo311 and today we're checking out Resident Evil 4. Like normal, I'll try and keep this video as spoiler free as possible and just to set the tone, I was so wrong about this game. If you've been following my channel, you may have heard me mention I wasn't overly excited for Resident Evil 4. I've played the original 15 years ago multiple times and the footage shown for this game wasn't looking fantastic. Well, I'm extremely excited to report that I was wrong, I should have been excited and this title is absolutely fantastic. From this point forward I will break down the video in my standard review format followed by a little bit of narrated gameplay and there are of course links and timestamps in the description if you want to jump around. But let's start things off with the summary. Resident Evil 4 is obviously the fourth title in the long-running Resident Evil video game series. It originally released back in 2005 on the Nintendo GameCube and was later ported to multiple other platforms. This new VR version is exclusive to to the Oculus Quest 2, and they've managed to do an amazing job keeping it true to the original, yet updating the title closer to 2021 standards and making it into a true VR experience. I'll go through that more later on in detail, but if you're completely unaware of Resident Evil 4, it's a horror action-themed adventure title spanning five chapters and roughly 10 to 15 hours of gameplay. It's filled with cutscenes, quick time events, puzzles, lots of zombie murdering, and big boss fights. My concerns going into this game were the dated graphics, the overall VR implementation, and I just had a lack of enthusiasm to replay a 15-year-old game. Well, I'm happy to report that none of these are real issues. The graphics have been updated. In fact, 4,500 textures have been repainted with increased resolution. While it's not a very colorful game, Resident Evil 4 looks fantastic by Oculus Quest 2 standards. The VR implementation is also done phenomenally well, including multiple movement types for new and veteran VR players. You'll find your standard comfort options like vignetting and snap turning, plus optional immersive settings for things like weapon handling. If you feel comfortable, I do recommend turning on those immersive settings throughout the game. They actually end up feeling better than some games that were built from the ground up for VR. In-game quick time events have been modified to use motion control movements, which is a nice touch, and the cutscene implementation is done well enough, it's just the only thing that feels slightly out of place in a VR title. For the nostalgic among us wondering if they changed too much of the game, you can rejoice because except for a specific boss fight that was remade specifically for VR, this is a faithful recreation that maintains the original character animations, world geometry, and core systems. And this is no way some type of watered down version. So by now, I think you should know the answer to our next question, but do I recommend you buy this game? For both classic Resident Evil fans and newcomers alike, this is an excellent title and easy recommendation. It offers much more than your typical VR game and doesn't feel like some lazy flat screen money grab port. The only people I would recommend against picking up this game are those easily grossed out or don't enjoy anything with a horror theme. While it's not a scary title, it can be quite grotesque. I do also need to briefly mention motion sickness. If you are at all sensitive, please make sure to enable some comfort options. While the majority of the game is comfortable, there is some jumping and vehicles that might turn your stomach. That being said, here's the verdict. Resident Evil 4 is a faithful port and easily one of the best games available on the Oculus Quest 2. It has a lengthy campaign, it's full of action, and has an interesting storyline. The pros include excellent graphics, great implementation of motion controls, a lengthy campaign, Campaign, exciting storytelling, and most importantly, fun combat. On the con side, the cutscenes feel a little bit out of place in VR, and this title might be a bit intense for new VR gamers. Okay, we're gonna jump into some narrated gameplay, but that was another VR rundown, and if you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up. I will try and keep this spoiler free, but what's considered a spoiler is different for everyone. I'll give you a little heads up of what's coming, and you could jump ahead to the next chapter if you like. The game starts with a moderately lengthy cutscene, which like I said, feels a bit out of place here, but does set the tone. You're in a middle of nowhere country, looking for the president's daughter. Looking under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Cornell, why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? Yo, who are you really? Come on and tell us. You are a long way from home, cowboy. Now they did an excellent job of implementing some dialogue. This radio chatter works great and feels uniquely VR. Yeah. I'll try to find some more information on my end as well. Good. Talk to you later. Leon out. 
right off the bat the game shows you control and comfort options and this is what i was mentioning with immersive controls leon has weapons on his hip and vest and over his shoulder which you can grab and access like you would in a normal vr game and i highly recommend this is how you play the title but it can still be played closer to the original now some of these changes actually make the game easier you can now move and aim and even dual wield a pistol and knife the jump in and out of cutscenes is okay it's a little distracting but you get used to it The action definitely gets intense when they start throwing large groups of enemies at you, which just makes pulling the pin on a grenade so much more satisfying. Here's a vehicle I mentioned in the review. Luckily, the game immediately allows you to select your comfort option. And honestly, if you have any motion sickness issues at all, I recommend you enable comfort options here. This fantastic stranger will let you sell and buy items and even upgrade your weapons. What are you buying? Okay, and this last clip here gets a spoiler warning. It's one of the first bosses you fight in the game. He's rather large and imposing, which is way cooler in VR, but with the ability to move and shoot at the same time, plus the fact that I fully upgraded my weapons and stocked up on ammo made this fight extremely easy. 